What's up guys? So now that 2022 is officially over, I wanted to put a video together where I would share some of the stuff that I've been enjoying to use for the past year as a full stack web developer, what I'm planning to use into 2023, and some of the stuff that I'm interested in learning as well. I'll be sharing what I like to use across the stack, so that includes working with front end frameworks, how I like to do styling, the technologies I like to use to build APIs on the back end, databases, as well as other topics like doing full text search, um, working with images, sending texts and emails, processing payments, and also where I like deploying my code. Before we begin, bear in mind that this stuff can vary greatly depending on your situation, and this is just the stuff that I personally like using and find works well for me. Of course, there might be better ways to do things, so I'll make sure to highlight some of the things that I'm already interested in learning this year, and I'd also love to hear about the stuff that you guys are using and any recommendations you might have for me in the comments. Let's get started. So on the front end, I'm probably gonna be using Svelte and SvelteKit if I can for a lot of projects this year. On the front end, I had been using React and Next.js for about two years, but three months ago, I started learning Svelte along with SvelteKit for a server-side rendering. React and Next.js had been working really well for me and I still think they're awesome, but after hearing some great things about Svelte, I wanted to give it a try. Even though I haven't been using Svelte and SvelteKit for that long, I've already found I've been able to move faster, write less code, enjoy working on the front end a bit more, ship things more quickly, and the overall development experience is very nice. SvelteKit also recently reached 1.0, so it should be pretty stable for production, and I think it's a really solid choice. One thing I really do miss about React and Next is the larger community surrounding these technologies, which often means that you can find an answer for pretty much any question you might have, and there's also probably a package for anything you would want to do. In spite of this, because Svelte allows me to rely less on external packages, it helps me be more concise and more efficient, and because I can build things faster, I'm gonna continue learning and using Svelte this year. I also wanna point out that I use TypeScript on the front end as well, and I can't really see myself going back to plain JavaScript. I think the TypeScript dev experience is so much better, it helps prevent you from making mistakes, and honestly, if your project has any level of complexity, I would highly recommend it. Now for styling on the front end, I really like using Tailwind CSS. I found it's a great way to build better looking applications easier and faster, while still giving you a lot of flexibility, especially when compared to using something like pre-built UI component libraries. Having said that, along with Tailwind, I also really like using Headless UI, which are a set of unstyled UI components that are made to integrate with Tailwind so that it's really easy to build common stuff like dialog boxes, switches, and drop-down menus. There isn't an official version of Headless UI for Svelte, but I've been using an unofficial port of it that honestly works really well. All right, let's move on now to working on the backend and building APIs. One route to take is to build backend functionality directly with SvelteKit with its API routes, but because I like deploying my SvelteKit applications to Vercel, and Vercel is serverless, in spite of all of its really nice benefits, there are some additional considerations to make. For now, I've stuck with building my backend APIs separately, though it's something that might change in the future. I use TypeScript here to keep the language the same as the front end, and I usually go with Node.js and Express for the server and Postgres for the database. One of the reasons I build the backend separately and deploy it to long running servers instead of a serverless environment like Vercel is that the Postgres database isn't really made for serverless environments. If you were to go serverless, you would have to look into database pooling for Postgres with something like PG Bouncer, which to me kind of nullifies the benefits of going serverless anyways, or you would have to look into other database options that are better suited for serverless environments. Into 2023, I am interested in learning more about other database options that are better suited for serverless, like PlanetScale, for example, which I've heard is a good option for MySQL databases, or other NoSQL options like DynamoDB. 
Moving on to building the API itself, I really like using and working with GraphQL. Some of the things I really like about GraphQL is that it helps keep things type safe, especially if you're using TypeScript on the front end. Front end GraphQL clients often have really nice features built in like caching, you can query the exact data that you need on a given page. And I also like being able to aggregate multiple data sources into a single graph as well. Into 2023, I'm also interested in learning more about TRPC, which I've heard is a simpler approach that can remove some of the overhead that GraphQL can have while still providing a lot of the same benefits. To build the GraphQL API itself, I'm currently using GraphQL Yoga and Type GraphQL. I really like working with Type GraphQL because it gives me the ability to define and manage all the GraphQL related stuff with TypeScript classes and decorators, which I found to be a really nice approach. To query the database from the GraphQL API, I'm currently using the Prisma ORM. It helps me manage the database schema and migrations in a really straightforward way. The documentation is really nice and significantly it's also fully type safe. I actually switched recently from Objection.js to the Prisma ORM, so it's something that I'm planning to continue using and learning into 2023. I also want to point out that to query the GraphQL backend API from the Svelte frontend, I'm currently using a frontend GraphQL client made specifically for Svelte Kit called Houdini. It does a lot of stuff for you under the hood like automatic code generation and overall I found this to be a really nice way to query GraphQL data from a SvelteKit app. If you're wondering where I deploy my backend code and have my database, I'm currently using a service called Render. They aren't sponsoring this video by the way, this is just what I've been enjoying to use recently. I found this service helps me deploy and run my GraphQL API on traditional long running servers very easily. They also have a managed solution for Postgres and they also make scaling pretty straightforward. I used to use AWS Elastic Beanstalk for the backend API and RDS for the Postgres database, but to be honest, it was kind of a pain to work with for me. To finish things off, I want to briefly mention some other things that I'm using and learning. I've been using Cloudinary for hosting and storing the images for my projects. I found they make things pretty straightforward. I've enjoyed using them. They aren't sponsoring this video either. I like using Stripe for processing payments. They have really nice solutions and tools for developers. I go with Twilio for sending SMS text messages, SendGrid for emails. For doing full text search, I'd probably try using Postgres for that first, but I'm planning on learning and trying out Algolia this year. Though I've heard if your project is big enough, it can get pretty expensive. And I'd probably go with Redis if I ever had to do any sort of caching or sharing state between horizontally scaled servers on the backend. Redis is another technology that I haven't used that much and I want to learn more of in 2023. Finally, to work with and manage all of this code, I've been using Monorepo with Turbo Repo to keep the front end and back end code in the same repository. This is another thing that I've adopted recently and will be using and learning more of in 2023. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you probably already know that to edit all of this code, I use the NeoVim editor. And that's it, you guys. Those are the tools and technologies that I've been using and learning recently, and I'm planning to continue learning how to use and work with in 2023. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. I would love to hear what your thoughts are the stuff you're using, and any recommendations you might have for me in the comments. Also, let me know if you'd like some more in-depth tutorials on how to work with and use some of these technologies. Don't forget to leave a like down below, it really helps me out. And remember to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.